Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we're covering the Day 18 Unit 8 Test Review on Exponential and Logarithmic Functions. Let's get started with question number one. Evaluate without using a calculator. So we have log base 5 of 625. Well, that is equal to some number such that 5 raised to some number is equal to 625 and we know that that is 4. 5 to the fourth is 625. So the answer is 4. Question number 2. What is log base 2 of 64? Well, it's equal to some number such that 2 raised to that number is equal to 64. And we know that 2 to the 6th power is 64. So the answer is 6. And then question number 3. Log base 1 -third of 81. Well, that is equal to some number such that 1 third raised to some number is 81. And that number would be negative 4. So the answer is negative 4. All right, and here's number 4. We have log base 64 of 512. That's equal to some number such that 64 raised to that power is 512. Well, we know that 512 is actually 8 to the third power. So we need something that would get from 64 down to 8. Well, if we take the square root of 64, that would give us 8. And then we would raise that to the third power to get 512. So putting that all together, the exponent is going to be 3 over 2 because the 2 on the bottom will, would give us the square root of 64, which would be 8. And then we'd raise that to the third power to get 512. So our answer is 3 over 2. All right, for number 5, we have log base 2 of 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. Well, that's equal to some number. And we're looking for 2 raised to that power is equal to negative 1 fourth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is impossible. 2 raised to any power is always going to be a positive number. So this is actually impossible, and the answer is undefined. And here's number 6. We have log base 52 of 1 is equal to some number, and 52 raised to that number is 1. And we know that any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. So our answer is 0. All right, for number 7, 8, and 9, it says find the inverse of each function. So we have f of x is the natural log of x plus 6. The first step in finding the inverse is to change the f of x to y. And then the next step would be to switch the x and the y. So y becomes x and x becomes y. And then now that we have the natural log isolated, we can now write this as an exponential equation. And we know that the base of natural log is base e. So this becomes e raised to the power of x equals y plus 6. Now we get y by itself by subtracting 6 from both sides. So y is equal to e to the x minus 6. And then we just change the y back to inverse function. So the inverse of x is e to the x minus 6. All right, question number 8. We have f of x is log base 2 of x plus 3. First step, change the f of x to y. Step 2 is to switch the x and the y. And now we want to get this log by itself, so we'll subtract 3 from both sides. So x minus 3 is equal to the log. Now we'll convert the log to an exponent using base 2. So that would be base 2 raised to the power of x minus 3 is equal to y, and then change y back to f of x, or the f inverse. So f inverse of x is 2 raised to the power of x minus 3. And then number 9, f of x is 8 raised to the x plus 4. First step, change f of x to y. Next step, switch the x and the y. And now the exponent is isolated, so we will convert this into log form using base 8. So that would be log base 8 of x is equal to y plus 4. 
and now get y by itself by subtracting 4 from both sides. So y would be log base 8 of x minus 4. Now change the y back to inverse, so f inverse of x is log base 8 of x minus 4. Okay, here's number 10. We're finding the inverse of this function again. So we're going to change the f of x to y, and then we're going to switch the x and y. Then we're going to add 4 to both sides to get the exponent by itself. So now we have x plus 4 is equal to 5 raised to the y. Now we'll convert this into log form using base 5. So that would be log base 5 of x plus 4 equals y and then convert y back to its inverse form. So the inverse of f is equal to log base 5 of x plus 4. And for number 11, we have the f of x. We'll go ahead and switch that to y. Then we'll switch the x and y. Now we'll subtract 7 from both sides. So we're trying to get the log by itself. So that'll be x minus 7 equals the log. Now we'll convert this to exponent using base 3. So that'll be 3 raised to the x minus 7 equals y minus 5. And then get the y by itself. So let's add 5 to both sides. So y equals 3 raised to the x minus 7 plus 5. And then let's just rewrite it in inverse form. So it's 3 to the x minus 7 plus 5. And then for number 12, um, the y is already there. So let's just go ahead and switch the x and y. And now let's get the log by itself by adding 5 to both sides. And then let's uh, change this to exponent form using a base of 4. So that'll be 4 raised to the x plus 5 equals 2y. And now let's get y by itself by dividing by 2. So y is 4 raised to the x plus 5 all divided by 2. And switch it around and say y is equal to that. So that is our answer. All right, starting with number 13, it says expand each expression and simplify all answers. So for 13, we have log base 8 of 64x squared. We can expand this multiplication into addition. So we'll have log base 8 of 64 plus log base 8 of x squared. Well then, we can bring the 2 out in front using that power rule. So now we'll have log base 8 64 plus 2 log base 8 of x. And then we can simplify this because we know what log base 8 of 64 is. That's going to be 2. And that's because 8 raised to the second power would give us 64. So our final answer is 2 plus 2 log base 8 of x. All right, and here's number 14. We start with the natural log of 3y to the fourth divided by x cubed. And we can use the uh, the quotient rule which says that we can expand this to subtraction. So that'll be log of 3y to the fourth minus natural log of x to the third. Now on the next line we can expand the 3y to the fourth into addition. So that's log natural log 3 plus natural log y to the fourth minus natural log of x cubed. Now let's use the power rule by bringing the exponents out in front. So the 4 goes out in front here and the 3 moves out to the front there. And so we have our final answer of natural log 3 plus 4 natural log y minus 3 natural log x. And then here's number 15. We have the log of 6 times x to the third times y times z. And all of that will expand to addition so that would be log 6 plus log x to the third plus log y plus log z. Now let's take the exponent 3, move it out to the front of the log, and we have our final answer. Log 6 plus 3 log x plus log y plus log z. 
And starting with number 16, it says to condense each expression and simplify. All right, so for 16, we have 2 log x plus 3 log y. We can use the exponent rule backwards by taking the 2 and moving it to the exponent position. Also taking the 3 and moving it in the exponent position. So we'll get log of x squared plus log of y to the third. And now we can condense further because it addition will condense back to multiplication. So our final answer is log of x squared y to the third. And here's number 17. So we have 5 natural log z minus the quantity 3 natural log x plus 4 natural log y. Well, we can go ahead and move the 5 back to the exponent position, so that'll be natural log z to the fifth. We can also move the 3 to the exponent and 4 to the exponent. So we have natural log x to the third and natural log y to the fourth. Now we can take this expression inside here and write it as a product. So that'll be natural log x cubed y to the fourth. And then finally, because this is subtraction, we can convert that back to division. So we'll have as our final answer natural log of z to the fifth over x to the third y to the fourth. All right, starting with 18 and through 20, it says use the change of base to evaluate each of the following expressions without the use of a calculator. So what I have here for you is the table of powers. This is what we're going to use to help us solve 18 through 20. All right, so for question 18, we have log base 2401 of 1 over 16807. The trick is to look up here in the table of powers for both of these numbers in the same row. So we're looking for 2401 and 16807 in the same row. Well, here we have in row number 7, we have 2401 is to the fourth power and 16807 is to the fifth power. So that lets us know that we're going to be using base 7. Now let's use the change of base rule. So we can change this to base 7 by writing it this way. It'll be log base 7 of 16807 to the negative 1. Uh, and that's because this ended up being a fraction um, at the beginning. So we raise it to the negative 1 power because of the fraction. And then on the bottom, it's log base 7 of 2401. Okay, so that's your change of base rule. The next thing is to move the exponent of negative 1 out in front of the log. So that'll be negative log base 7 of 16807 and divided by log base 7 of 2401. And now looking at the table, we know that log base 7 of 16807 is 5 because 7 to the fifth power gives us that number. Likewise, log base 7 of 2401 is going to be 4 because 7 to the fourth power is 2401. So when we put that all together, we have this answer, and this actually would be our final answer. It's negative 5 over 4 which can also be written as a decimal of negative 1.25. Number 19, we have log base 4096 of 64. So the key would be to figure out which row both of these numbers are in. And it looks like it's row number 8. Here is 4096 and here is 64. So we're going to use base 8 when we write it using the change of base rule. All right, so that would be written as log base 8 of the 64 divided by log base 8 of the 4096. Now, log base 8 of 64 is 2 because 8 to the second power is 64. And likewise, log base 8 of 4096 is going to be 4 because 8 raised to the fourth power is 4096. 
So we're going to end up with 2 over 4, which of course is 1 half for our final answer. And number 20, we have log base 1 over 216 of 1 over 1296. Well, let's find 216 and 1296 in the same row. And here it is in row number 6, 216 and 1296. So that means we're going to use base 6. So applying the change of base formula, it's going to be log base 6 of 1296 to the negative 1, uh, and that's because we had a fraction at the beginning. And log base 6 of 216 to the negative 1, again, because that was a fraction. Now move the exponents out in front. So we have negative log on the top, negative log on the bottom. Now let's apply the uh, table of powers. Log base 6 of 1296 is going to be 4 um, because 6 to the 4th power gives us 1296. So that's going to be negative 4 on the top. And log base 6 of 216 is going to be 3 because 6 to the 3rd is 216. So it looks like we're going to have negative 4 over negative 3. The negatives cancel and our final answer is just 4 thirds. Alright, starting with number 21, solve each equation or inequality. And for 21 it's an exponential equation with the same base on both sides so that we can set each of the exponents equal to each other. So 5x is equal to x plus 8. And subtracting x from both sides we get 4x is equal to 8 which means x is 2. For number 22, we can rewrite the 32 as 2 to the fifth power. And now we have the same base on both sides. So the exponents are equal to each other. And 3x minus 1 is equal to 5. Adding 1 to both sides, we have 3x equals 6. And dividing by 3, we have x is equal to 2. And for 23, we want to get the e to the x by itself, so let's divide by 2 on both sides. So e to the x is 5. Now let's convert this to a log form, and the log equation would be natural log. So x is equal to the natural log of 5, which is approximately 1.61. Alright, and here's number 24. Again, we can rewrite both sides using the same base, um, and that base would be 3. So we know that 9 is 3 squared and 27 is 3 to the third. Now we'll distribute the 2 times the x plus 1 and also distribute 3 times the x minus 1. And the result is 2x plus 2 and 3x minus 3. Now we can set these exponents equal to each other. So 2x plus 2 equals 3x minus 3. Let's go ahead and uh, subtract 2x from both sides and also add 5 to both sides and the result is x equals 5. For number 25, we can write both sides using the base of 5. Uh, we know that 25 is 5 squared and 125 is 5 to the third. After distributing the exponents, we get 5 to the 4x equals 5 to the 3x minus 9. And setting the exponents equal to each other, 4x equals 3x minus 9. Well, let's subtract 3x from both sides, and the result is x equals negative 9. And for number 26, we need to isolate the um, e to the 4x. So let's add 3 to both sides. So e to the 4x equals 10, and now let's convert it to natural log. And that would be natural log 10 is equal to 4x. And let's divide by 4, and so we get x is equal to natural log 10, all divided by 4, which is approximately 0.58. All right, and starting with 27, we've got log equations that we're solving. Well, we have natural log of something equals the natural log of something else. 
And so we can drop the natural logs and set 5x minus 1 to equal 3x plus 3. Now let's subtract 3x from both sides. And at the same time, let's add 1 to both sides. So we get 2x equals 4, which means x will equal 2. And for number 28, again, we have log base 2 of something equals log base 2 of something else. So we can drop the logs and just set the 4x minus 1 equal to 2x plus 5. Let's subtract 2x from both sides and also add 1 to both sides. So we get 2x is equal to 6, which means x is equal to 3. And if we have this log base 9 of something, minus log base 9 of 5, we can go ahead and use the quotient rule where the subtraction would be condensed back to a fraction. So this becomes log base 9 of 3x plus 14 over 5. And that's equal to log base 9 of the 2x. Now since we have log of something equals log of something else, then we can drop the logs and set these two quantities equal. So now 3x plus 14 over 5 must be equal to 2x. Let's multiply by 5 on both sides. And we get 10x on the right. And now let's subtract 3x from both sides. And we get 14 equals 7x. And now let's divide by 7. And we get x is equal to 2.